Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Alan Arnett, owner and primary physician at Parkview Health and Wellness Center located in Long Beach, California. For the last 30 years, I have been a clinician helping people to achieve better health and freedom from disease using natural means. One of the most passionate techniques that I use, the techniques I'm more passionate about, is using food to help heal the body. If I hadn't become a doctor, I would have become a chef. I was that passionate about how food was and how it made me feel. So as a physician, I really turn back to food. Food is what makes us feel better, and food is what makes us feel sick. So one of the things I'm most passionate about then is how to cleanse the body so that the body stays in peak condition. Kind of like taking your car in for a tune-up, it makes your body work better. So the first question I have for us today to get us started over what will soon be a several series of Facebook Lives about cleansing is, why cleanse? Why would we cleanse? Well, it's true that natural physiology of the kidney and the liver and the lungs take care of themselves. And if they were given the right things, they probably wouldn't need a lot. But let me ask you a question. If you dusted your house and then locked it up and didn't return to it for three months, would it still be clean? No, of course not. You would still need to clean it even though it's just a surface cleaning. Our body accumulates things over time. And part of our physiology is designed to neutralize those things, toxins, undigested food particles, etc., uh, dead debris that hasn't been eaten up, and store that in our joints, in our tendons, and in our brain. And so cleansing regularly allows our body to cleanse itself so that these storage pieces don't get too thick or too deep. Imagine if you never, ever, ever looked behind your couch after 20 years. What would that floor look like? Well, that's oftentimes what most people's arteries and gallbladders look like. That's oftentimes what causes hemorrhages and strokes and heart attacks. It's just things that have not been taken care of. Medicines can be very powerful, but do nothing towards improving the health in this way. This organization in the body that takes care of itself. Now, cleansing versus detox. This is a very common question that I get asked. Well, cleansing and detoxification are similar in some ways, and certainly out on the street, colloquially, there are synonyms. They can be used back and forth. In fact, I have the word detox in quotes because many people use that fun. Oh, I had a rough weekend. I need to detox. But in that case, what they're usually referring to is something specific, such as alcohol, such as from heavy foods. And in a medical setting, it could even be something as detoxification from heavy metals, such as lead, cadmium, or mercury, or others. So detoxification, both on the street and in the doctor's office, usually refer to these things. Specific, usually needing specific techniques, sometimes specific strategies or specific appliances or machines. And once detoxed, usually is not implying that it will retox. Cleansing, on the other hand, is a very different way to go about things. Cleansing means getting rid of phlegm, mucus, and excess acids that clog and congest the body's crevices inside and out. This is like when your mouth feels all slimy and you go and you brush your teeth and you floss real well and you do some nice, nice mouth rinse, you feel much better. Well, imagine doing that to your whole system. So cleansing then is something that is done over time repeatedly. I recommend every six months at the change of the seasons, spring and fall. And is expected that over time you're probably gonna get a little dirty so the need to cleaning isn't in question what is in question is how much and how long would I need to do it? Do I need a light dusting or do I need to pull the couches out and do deep, heavy cleansing? So to me, cleansing is the thing that needs to be guided. It's the thing that needs to be inspired. And it's the thing that even in other settings, spiritual and religious settings, they oftentimes talk about going through periods of cleansing. Here, they oftentimes are also referring to non-physical things such as emotions, mental, and even spiritual connections. What about these four questions, or four comments, you might say, are the most common things people ask me about cleansing. Cleansing and detox, again, could be synonyms, but I will refer to cleansing as that's what I would like to teach you. So, whole foods. Whole foods, besides being the name of a grocery store, are referring to foods that are unprocessed. It is in their unprocessed state that your body knows how to take care of them. The more processing you give something, the less your body knows what to do with it. This is why fast foods, pre-bought foods, pre-packaged foods, and certainly pre-salted and pre-spiced foods oftentimes, over time, cause a great deal of congestion in the body to break down. 
This is why, unfortunately, it is the saddest of people who won't go into the kitchen. The kitchen is actually where whole foods are bought, cleaned, prepared, cooked, and then cleaned up afterwards. That whole process is the process of what we have evolved as beings who bring nourishment into ourselves for the purpose of having more energy. Whole foods are about the only thing that can do that. Even when we talk about herbs as supplements or as foods or spices, we're referring largely to the whole component there, oftentimes not as much an extract. But whole foods are the things that make your gallbladder and your stomach lining and your liver and your colon do much better. The opposite of whole foods would be pills, powders, and potions. Those are all fine and well and good enough and oftentimes are for detoxing, but they rarely nourish the body long term and are not sustainable actions. When we use whole foods, that's what your body has known the most for millions of years or at least hundreds of thousands of years based on what you believe. Nevertheless, your stomach lining needs real food. Which foods? the least processed you can get. And that is our inspiration for today, for if the least you do towards cleansing this fall is to start integrating more whole foods into your diet, this in itself will start to bring about amazing amounts of internal, natural cleansing and detoxification for yourself. This would include fresh purified water, fruits and vegetables, more vegetables than fruits, and clean animal proteins, uh, hormone-free, RHBT-free, antibiotic-free, cage-free, all those things that need to go with the animal proteins. And certainly people could use vegetarian options emphasizing beans, pulses, uh, and grains as well. More on that, future posts will be going into each of these in more depth. The second word is fasting. Fasting is very popular now. If you look on the internet, at YouTube and various other health places on the internet, you'll see fasting talked about a lot. Well, fasting is one of the oldest health techniques there has been, so everything old is new again. What's new about it is we're convincing ourselves more of its value because we now have a scientific language in which to explain what fasting is and why we should do it. It's still the same thing as it's always been. So fasting can be a way to cleanse, but that would be the front door, the good side of it. It helps to improve your bodily cleansing itself. The back side of fasting is that you have to be prepared for your body physiology in order to really benefit from it. Most people have some form of dysglycemia, poor sugar handling, and that means they're not ready for fasting yet, at least in my opinion as a doctor. And so fasting has a front and a back door to it. We're going to do a whole post on that as well. Juicing, another very common and very popular way to do cleansing, and if done in the right way, can be helpful. The front door to juicing. Again, it's referring to whole things. So juicing is just taking the, the blood of the plant, you could say, the juice from the plants, and then putting it through our body. What we have always known, and what science is continuing to confirm, is that you want more vegetables than fruits, for fruits also have fructose, and fructose we need in limited supply. So we don't want to get too much of our sugars from the fruit juice, yet some can be very helpful and make juicing tasty. The other word about juicing that I could recommend in this kind of overview we're doing today is if you're going to use juicing for the purpose of cleansing or detoxing, you don't want to buy pasteurized pre-made stuff. There are a few companies and locations that are starting to make raw, unpasteurized, fresh made vegetable and fruit juices. If you're going to use it for the purpose of cleansing, that's the only kind that's really going to benefit you. In fact, in my, my humble opinion, one of the best devices you can have in your kitchen for good health is a good juicer. Don't buy a cheap juicer. Buy a good juicer that you will use. You will save lots of money when you're going through cleanses rather than having to buy everything all at once. Nevertheless, this also is why juicing is popular because there are places that are providing raw, unpasteurized juices that can be ready to go. Make sure they're organic. There are some places that don't tell you it's not organic until you ask. Other places tell you up front. So this can be good. That's the front door. The back side of juicing is that it doesn't change you. It changes you for the time you do it. It can clean you out, but it doesn't change your habits. It doesn't get you any closer to the kitchen unless you've made your juices. And it doesn't get you any closer to health habits that are more sustainable away from the cleanse. So juicing can be good. Juicing cannot be good. It's how you do it and how you put it together. And these are what future blog posts are going to be about. The last common question is, do I have to go vegetarian 
Or the reverse question, can I use meat? And the answer is, in a cleanse, we are looking to get rid of excess phlegm, mucus, and acids. That does not by itself imply whether our proteins come from vegetable or animal sources. Cleansing is available to all types, whether we use meats or not. But certainly, I will say this. When we choose proteins from the animal source, we are going to begin to reduce the amount by volume and increasing the protein by volume of plant-based proteins. The peak of any cleanse, if you're using whole foods, will typically emphasize a non-meat moment, a few days to a few weeks, because that does extra value, particularly for the colon, in cleansing it. The extreme of never eating meat again is for a different topic at a different time, but for cleansing purposes, you can use some animal proteins, depends on how you do it. And that's what brings me into the picture. You can find YouTube videos on every one of these types, and they'll tell you that each one is the best. But how do you know which one is right for you? What is the conditions that are right for your body to choose which of these, and should I do several, and if I do, which one should come first? This is where it becomes individual, and over the next several blog posts, in the next several weeks, we will be covering exactly this that I have just brought up. But to give you a tidbit for today, let me remind you of a few basic things. Drinking water up to a half a gallon a day, plus or minus, is the most basic cleanse that anyone can contribute. This does not include sodas, this does not include fruit juices, it does not include your coffee or your tea, those dehydrate the body. You may use herbal teas if they are light, you may count half your juice as water, half of your dairy, like say milk, as water, but the other half does not count. To keep your body well hydrated, even with soups during the change of season, in itself is a wonderful way to cleanse, and that would be coming from the whole food option. Use lots of fresh spices if you make soups. The other simple tip that I can give you is that keeping your mouth clean and keeping your gums clean will have an immediate impact upon your stomach. When you bite into something, let's say you went to a 7-Eleven and bought a sandwich, and you bite into it, after the end of it, usually there's a slime all over the mouth. Because those products have been preserved, so they last forever, they usually are very unconscionable, low quality foods, and they leave it. Your mouth starts to tell you it doesn't want that. So by the time it makes it down here, the reason there's an ug and a glug after low quality foods is because the body is having to create mucus coating in order to defend against the toxic residues of the low quality food. So simply choosing whole food options, making your own sandwich from stuff bought at a better grocery store, is going to give you a different feel in the mouth. So using your mouth as awareness when you eat the next several meals of whatever you eat, ask yourself, how did my mouth approve of that? Did it like it or did it not like it? So now what I'd like to do is I'd like to turn the tables here and open up our short talk here for any questions that people may have. This is our first blog post, so I'm not sure there maybe even is a question yet. I've got some prepared if you don't, but let's open the door. So I'll check with my staff. Any questions so far? Um, no, just everybody's just saying hi and um, how they really love um, the talk. It's super interesting. Um, okay, so that's good. So that's then I've got some questions planned. The main question is the first question. Why cleanse? Well, we cleanse primarily. If you come to see me, you know I'm a lot deeper than nutrition. The primary reason we cleanse is because we tend to believe our mind. And our mind is in control of our taste buds, and we start to put our taste bud as the most important thing there is. The moment that happens, our health is in peril. The number one reason I recommend cleaning is to get your mind off of the automatic that you must have taste as the primary thing. Foods taste great. But if you are led that it must be pleasing every single time you put food in your mouth, you will struggle with health. So the primary reason for cleansing is for the mind. We have a question from Shannon. Excellent. Um, what would you tell someone who is frightened of starting a cleanse oh, or detox? Oh, great question. Well, thank you, Shannon, for your question. And to repeat the question, the question is, what do I tell someone if they're frightened or scared about cleansing? The first thing I would do is look them straight in the eyes and say, your reaction is totally normal. Anything that we embark on that is new, if we're actually serious about it, is going to make us a little fearful because we know we're entering into something unknown and possibly uncertain. Am I going to like the foods? What if I give up the foods I like? How's my body going to react? What does all this mean? May bring up more questions than it settles. Nevertheless, if we had every answer before we took step, man would never create anything. 
For it is oftentimes stepping into that uncomfortable beyond that we start to grow. In that case, I would recommend to that person that they start with the easiest step from, that, from where they are. And that is usually just start focusing on eating more whole-based foods. Go to the grocery store. Make your own stuff. Don't buy so much pre-made food. Don't go out to restaurants so much. I love restaurants. I've got best friends who are restaurateurs, but restaurants, unless they pass that cost onto you on the menu, they are not choosing the best oils, they are not choosing the best spices, they can't stay in business, even really good restaurants. So enjoy restaurants, but eat less, eat at home more, because whole foods themselves, not the grocery store, but eating foods in their whole form are going to make the body do its job. If that's even too rough, I would recommend increasing hydration. Thank you. She's also saying, um, what would you recommend as a starting point? What would I recommend as a starting point? The starting point is whatever the end person feels inspired to do. So what that means is you ask yourself, do I want to go vegetarian? Do I want to have a juice? I don't, a juice, but I would, do I want to juice fast? Do I want to try to fast? I don't recommend that first. Or do I just want to start eating more whole foods? Their belly is going to tell them, since I'm not there talking to them, their belly will tell them which of those options sounds most inspiring to take the next step. As Dorothy did in The Wizard of Oz, it was kind of tedious. It's a little OCD of her to walk all the way to that first yellow brick. I mean, really, it was only two feet apart. She could have just caught up, for those of you who've seen The Wizard of Oz. But she went all the way to the very beginning to start at the beginning as a metaphor that the journey to Oz began with the very first step. So that very first step is not the same for each person. It's just not the same. So I'm sorry I can't give you a specific. What I can say is your belly will tell you if you ask. So Amy is asking, what advice would you give when suggesting someone to cut down or eliminate coffee? People freak out. <laughs> okay, excellent question. So to repeat the question, thank you, Amy. Amy asks, what if people are trying to cut down something like, say, coffee, and they're having a reaction? Either they're scared or they're angry or they don't want to. I have to back up and give you some background information. We have, in essence, an observer who observes all the thoughts, feelings, and emotions that occur in the biofield called the body. You are not the reaction. You observe the reaction. So when your mind thinks of a food, it has a reaction. That's not who you are. That's what you're observing. And so when we start thinking of giving up something, the reaction of the mind will be, I want more or I want less. But none of that is you, unless you're attached to the thought. And that's where the idea of meditation, yoga practice, deep breathing practices can come in. Because really at that moment, what we're dealing with is a neurological hiccup that I must have what I want in order to be happy. Conditional happiness is really just pleasure, not true happiness. Because coffee is neither good nor bad for you. It's how you use it and how much. So at the very least, just start cutting down. Thank you for the questioning. Next question. So we have Leslie. She says, how often in the duration should your fast or juice? That's Okay, so how long in duration should a juice or a fast be? Well, like most things, it depends upon how you set yourself up, how familiar you are with the process, and what your goals are. What are you needing to do? For most people, neither one of these will be more than three days at a time. Sometimes we might do a five or a six day juice fast. I recommend that for more advanced practitioners and for people who can change their setting, like going out to a retreat or going to the lake. It is not wise to try to live your life and do a six day juice fast. Complete fasting day after day after day after day is really only for advanced people and it takes a lot more talking. But to keep the answer simple, about three days would be maximal. Both of these ideas need a build-up and a build-down to come off of it. So Heather is asking, is intermittent fasting a form of cleanse slash detox? Okay, intermittent fasting is certainly a popular term, and you see a lot about it. It can be helpful for the people who are ready for it. So that's the pre-claimer, right? You've got to be ready for it. And intermittent fasting is a way of looking at including fasting more regularly by not doing days of it at a time, but doing segments of the 24-hour cycle at a time. In general, it has a lot of health potential. 
The devil is in the details, how they do it. This isn't a topic about that, although we will be in future blog posts covering each of these topics. But today, if you're asking the question, intermittent fasting can be good for you, feel free to run that word in the internet search engine and on YouTube, and you'll see thousands, I think thousands, at least hundreds, of different people talking about it. But intermittent fasting can be helpful. Yes. All right, cool. And it looks like that's it. Okay. For questions. So for the end of our first blog post here, what I want more than anything is to stimulate more questions in you than necessarily answers. I'd like you guys to show up week after week, either just to tap in and confirm what you're already doing, asking questions to make it better for yourself, and then be able to post this to people who are not necessarily even near us so that more people can get good, clear information. A lot of people are selling stuff on the internet. Some of it's good, some of it's not good. My message, how it's done and how you string it together. That's going to make, in many ways, a bigger impact upon your success or failure than necessarily whether I did a juice fast or a whole food fast. It is my passion to offer health wisdom through experience. I come from hippies. I've been doing this stuff before I even knew I was doing it. And by living it, it's a very different thing than just simply thinking about it and performing an action. We call this the heart of healing. Looks like we have one more question. Uh, we have two more. So Linda's asking, what other ways of fasting are these are there besides juicing? So without trying to put anybody away, we are going to do a whole thing on fasting. I knew that would be a popular topic. Fasting is done either in whole segments, days at a time, or in shorter segments done more regularly. If you look up intermittent fasting on YouTube, you will find two to five minute videos that will give you more explanation, and then that will give you better questions when we cover it here ourselves. Excellent question, Linda. Thank you. Um, Jim is asking about water intake. How many glasses per day? This could not be a better thing to close with. It almost goes back to that first question of what's the simplest thing that I could possibly do to keep cleansing in my life. Again, cleansing separate from detox is to drink plenty of water through your body. Now, while we like to give a fixed number, 64 ounces, eight, eight ounce glasses is a middle part, plus or minus based on what you're doing, how dry it is, how moist it is, and so forth. But it's really, you need to feel your hydration as well. So in addition to giving you the standards, eight, eight ounce glasses of water, and if you'll review the first part of that, I kind of gave some specifics about what fluids would be good and what fluids would not be good. What I want to say most about hydration is hydration is a function of the minerals in the water. The minerals are electric and pull the water into the cells. Many people have the experience of drinking a ton of water and peeing it right out. That's flushing the kidneys, but it's not necessarily hydrating the cells of the body. So a simple way, a very simple way to test your hydration is called the skin pinch. If you'll pick up the skin on the back of your hand and drop it until you're about, I don't know, maybe 60, 65, it will instantly go back if you're well hydrated. And if you're slightly dehydrated, it will go back slower. There is age-related skin change due to collagen, and so there's a little bit slowing that's normal as we get older. But if you'll do it with yourself over a series of days, you'll start to notice the quicker response, and that lets your body know if you're better hydrated. Also, headaches are frequently a sign of dehydration, and hunger, if you're hungry a lot, is usually, I'm thirsty, my body doesn't have enough minerals. We will cover each of these in the upcoming blog post and in January, we're doing our big winter cleanse. It's a two-part, two Saturdays, one-week cleanse, kind of post-holidays. So for those of you who'd like to be live in person with me and go through a program, put that on your calendar. We'll have that date in the next few weeks, but it will be uh, probably the second or third week in January. Any other questions? Um, looks like we're done. All right, so I will say from your heart to my heart and back again, health is what we keep alive. Freedom from disease, step one. Health is an option. Never feel obligated to go to the store. You are luxurious that you have the option of so many grocery stores around you to go cook fresh, healthy foods. Bring friends into the kitchen. Bring your favorite, like even an iPod into the kitchen and watch something while you have fun in the kitchen. It's always said, that is where the heart of the home is. Until next time, guys. Thank you.